is the executive director of the Philippine Seed Industry Association. Prior to that, he was the senior regulatory and scientific affairs lead of Monsanto Philippines for 10 years. He also served as a general manager, director of the Crop Biotechnology Center, and acting deputy executive director of the Philippine for research at the Philippine Rice Research Institute. He holds a master's of philosophy in plant breeding from the University of Cambridge, uh, United Kingdom, and a PhD in genetics from the University of California, US. He is a recipient of many awards. For example, he was the outstanding, he was once uh, an outstanding young man, T-O-Y-M, a very um, prestigious award here in the Philippines. So he was once a 10, one of the 10 young outstanding young men, but that was a century ago. He was also an outstanding young scientist from the National Academy of Science and Technology. Again, that was many, many decades ago. But now, currently, he is one of the faces of biotechnology from the Department of Agriculture. I, I can joke about Gabi, our next speaker, because he's a very good friend. Today, uh, he will be sharing his presentation, The Road to Commercialization of BT Corn in the Philippines. Please welcome uh, our dear friend, Dr. Gabriel Gabi Romero. Thanks so much, Abe, for that uh, funny introduction. <laughs> it made me, it made me really uh, old. <laughs> Well, that's true. I was uh, young once, once upon a time. <laughs> so more about history. Uh, this is already my 10th time to participate in the Farmers Exchange Program. Don't ask Abe how long he has been with the Farmers Exchange. <laughs> anyway, and this is my second time virtually and hope and i hope the last time virtually speaking so hopefully next time around we can have a face to face farmers exchange program and uh, i've had a long association with crop life um uh, when i was uh, with monsanto and now i'm representing the philippine seed industry association so i also send the uh, uh, greetings from my association to Crop Life and to uh, Biotech Coalition of the Philippines. Our association is composed of uh, many members also of uh, Crop Life and other members from local seed companies and dealers. So we share a lot of common issues and advocacies with uh, Crop Life. And it is my a pleasure to share with you a, a technological revolution that swept the Philippines in 2002, uh, 19 years ago to be exact. And that uh, revolution was when the country started growing BT corn. Okay. So as soon as uh, BT corn um, was approved in the U.S. in 1996, uh, the Philippines already uh, became interested in adopting the technology very soon after that. And it's a GMO, it's a genetically modified organism. It's a new product, it's a new type of product. So there were concerns. Uh, are, are, there, uh, are there government policies that can handle this? Are there scientific experts or facilities uh, that uh, can be used to evaluate this product. Uh, is it uh, safe to humans, to livestock and non-target organisms or also called friendly organisms? And it was made to fight off the European strain of corn borer. That was the original uh, intent of the, of the product. So the question then is, Will the product also be effective uh, against the Asiatic corn border? So it's a different strain of uh, the, the pest. 
And to make the long story short, all these questions were answered yes. We have the biosafety guidelines as early as 1991. And then uh, new ones were developed along the way. And it was also good that there were academics, there were scientists, there were researchers uh, like entomologists, uh, molecular biologists, geneticists, who only needed uh, some supplementary orientation about biotechnology so that they will be equipped to look at this biotech product. And it was also good that there were seed companies who had experience in handling regulatory trials uh, with their mother companies in the US. And at the time, we already had the Institute of Plant Breeding, a, a very uh, good uh, and a leading R&D organization in the Philippines. And it was also good that there were already world-class facilities available that only needed retrofitting for containment purposes. The evaluation was done in three stages. First was the greenhouse test to check if the BT corn was good against the local corn borer. So this presentation actually echoes some of the uh, uh, points uh, discussed earlier by Dr. Hallas. So first the uh, greenhouse evaluation and then uh, the confined field test or the limited uh, field test and then followed by the multi-location field tests. So these were all done to see if friendly and other non-target uh, organisms were affected. For the greenhouse evaluation, there were two trials done at ERI, at the International Rice Research Institute. This is a, as uh, many of you know, it's a, a world-class facility uh, in Los Paños. Uh, and it was jointly uh, conducted by the seed companies and the IPB, the Institute of Plant Breeding. And uh, looking at the extent of uh, damage of the pests, in fact, the absence of damage of the pests, the IBCs or the Institutional Biosafety Committees, the National uh, Committee uh, of, on Biosafety of the Philippines, and the reviewers therefore concluded that MON A10 had excellent control against the ACB. So that very basic question was already answered. Although the product was originally designed for another pest, it proved to be effective against the local pest that was actually very devastating in the Philippines. The next phase was an open field trial, field trial or also called the limited field test. So this was done with the high fence to prevent uh, pollen flow. It's also uh, uh, located in, a, uh, an, in an isolated area. Uh, but uh, at that time, the public approval was already necessary because that was uh, being set up in a community. And this was conducted in Mindanao. So uh, earlier, it was done in Luzon, Southern Tagalog area. Then this time in Mindanao. And the trial confirmed the efficacy and the specificity against the ACB. That was uh, really good to know because not only did the trial prove the efficacy against the target pest, more than that, it showed that the other uh, target insects were not affected. And uh, it, it was uh, very interesting to know that, you know, the farmers who were earlier up against the trial, when, when they saw the nice clean ears of the BT corn, they completely turned around. Uh, from becoming opponents, they became defenders of the trial. And uh, they uh, changed their stand. They said, we will be supporting future, future trials of the BT corn. And uh, very soon they began asking for seeds. Where are these seeds? Uh, where can where can we buy them? Let, please uh, uh, sell the seeds to us. We want to have them because they wanted to uh, use the seeds themselves. And on to the third phase. So the, the multi-location field trials. But before doing that, 
there was also a realization during the confined field test. It was a big surprise that the public seemed not ready for this BT corn. That was uh, a little bit of a surprise because the, the company uh, was introducing an excellent product already proven in the US and uh, now uh, proven against the local pest. So it was uh, somewhat surprising that there would be opponents. There would be uh, some people or some quarters who would object to the use of this BT corn. So because of that realization, uh, there has to be a better outreach to farmers and consumers. And uh, the outreach also to the LGUs, the local government units that, uh, that, that are the ones providing the final approval for the trials to, uh, to go ahead. So this outreach was in intensified to counter the unfounded fear mongering by certain anti-GM entities. And it was also good that uh, we had a, a pro-biotech NGO, the Biotech Coalition of the Philippines, also helping the industry uh, with the stakeholders briefing. The field tests uh, were done in 19 locations around the country after securing the technical and public approvals. And uh, as expected, the trial showed outstanding performance and specificity against the ACB. So in, uh, when done in more locations around the Philippines, still the, the product proved uh, resistant against the corn borer and show that the other insects, especially the friendly insects, were not affected at all. And there's, there was also another bonus. The diseases were also minimized. So that was an additional benefit that the, that the trials uh, demonstrated. And with these positive results from the three phases of the local evaluation, uh, plus the submitted documents, on uh, food and feed safety assessments uh, done abroad, the Philippine regulators had no uh, had had nothing else to do but finally grant the approval to this BT corn product. So it was arguably, and there was no question about the safety and the efficacy of this product. So yeah, uh, the Philippines. Uh, became a GM uh, crop growing country uh, in 2003, just, just a month after the approval. Okay. How long was the approval timeline? Well, it took six years. Uh, but uh, knowing that this is a new product and somewhat controversial at the time, six years uh, was uh, already fast enough. If you are, if you also look at how other countries uh, did their approvals, this already counts as an amazing feat made possible by a strong political will of the government, sound policy, agile companies, and progressive scientists and passionate farmers. All of these stakeholders uh, work together to usher in this fantastic new technology that made the Philippines a GM crop uh, growing country in 2002. So, of course, uh, the, the adoption uh, was slow at first. So, uh, after the approval in 2002, already we experienced the exponential growth. Okay. It started with 10,000 hectares, and then through from 2003 to 2010, there was an exponential growth. And from 2011 up to present, we are already near saturation of the yellow corn hectares in the Philippines. Yeah. This better shows the hectare adoption of the of BT corn 
and uh, you can also see here that the product is stuck with herbicide tolerance or HT. And in some offerings, it's called Roundup Ready corn. So now it's um, almost, if you look at the last bar, it's almost 100% stock product combining the insect tolerance and herbicide tolerance uh, traits in, in the same hybrid or in the same variety. Yeah. And as you, as you can see here that in 2010, we, we already passed the 500,000 uh, hectare age mark. And that is when a country becomes or considered a mega GM uh, crop growing country that happened in 2010. So aside from the initial Mon 810 product uh, introduced in 22, there are four additional BT corn events that have been approved in the country. Uh, two from another one from Monsanto, two from Syngenta, and one from Pioneer uh, Corteba. And uh, that's good because the, the more BT products uh, there are in the market, there are more options for the farmers. And this adds to the stability or longevity of the BT corn products. Proper stewardship is necessary, especially now that the adoption is more than 80% of the yellow corn area. So we need to prevent or delay the breakdown of the BT corn control against the ACB. So there, there were lots of studies that uh, point to the breakdown of this uh, uh, of this uh, uh, corn border resistance or efficacy against corn, corn border if uh, there are no other genes available and if and if the if, and, and if there are no proper uh, stewardship uh, measures implemented in the farm and and there are two uh, critical ways uh, that can prolong the longevity of the BT corn product. First is increasing the refuge size. The refu refuge means planting non-BT, non-BT corn alongside the, the BT product. And also uh, increasing the number of genes uh, in, the, in the product. So as there, as more genes are inserted in, in corn, the, the development of resistance of the pests uh, will be delayed. There will be more generations required of the pests before it develops resistance to the product. A critical component of insect resistance management is field, monit field monitoring. That is very important. That's why uh, farmers or farmers are uh, advised uh, by technology developers, by companies, to be on the lookout uh, all the time on the presence of uh, damage of the pest, because the the damage will indicate some breakdown of resistance to the pest, and. Uh, uh, any signs of breakdown should be escalated to uh, municipal agriculturists, provincial ag agriculturists, uh, up to the national. So far, these are the reasons why uh, corn farmers in the Philippines adopt the biotech maize or biotech corn. So number one is the, the increase in yield. Uh, and, and second is the pest resistance. And uh, well, of course, a yield usually becomes primary, primary consideration, uh, but uh, pest resistance uh, helps a lot in stabilizing the yield of uh, the varieties or of the hybrid. Okay. 
But these are not just coming from the farmers themselves. These are not just stories uh, shared by farmers. There are, there are also academics, there are scientific studies that uh, truly show that uh, these biotech crops uh, bring, bring lots of benefits to farm productivity, farmers' income, and even to the environment. And we have uh, Filipino farmers that speak uh, about the benefits of uh, BT corn or yeah uh, or the stock corn that uh, they are now using. Among the uh, among these farmers are passionate and articulate farm lead farmer leaders like uh, you, you can see here Rosalie Eliasus and uh, Engineer Roger Navarro. Uh, they are. They can be called ambassadors of, of GM corn or BT corn. The, they themselves are farmers and they themselves can attest to how uh, they have increased their profits and how they have, uh, have more time with their family because uh, they, are, they have peace of mind uh, it, when they use this BT corn uh, because uh, they know that this will. Uh, uh, that this will uh, stand the, the ravages of the uh, corn border. So with that, I, I'd like to thank you for your attention and I'll be happy to take your questions. <laughs>